So here, um, we're going to relate vapor pressure to vaporization. We're going to use this graph to answer a few questions. Uh, so the first question, it says, which liquid is the most volatile and which is the least volatile? Well, well we should be able to figure it out by looking at these, uh, this graph that shows how the vapor pressure of these three liquids varies with temperature. Volatility is, uh, is a description of how readily or how quickly something evaporates at a given temperature. So for example, say room temperature, I have water on my hand. It's going to sit there for a while. But if I have rubbing alcohol on my hand, it's going to evaporate very quickly at that temperature. That's because water, uh, um, uh, rubbing alcohol is much more volatile than water at uh, room temperature. Okay, so here, the liquid that is the most volatile is going to be the one that has the highest vapor pressure at a given temperature. So the most volatile uh, of the three is going to be pyridine. You notice here, its vapor pressure is much higher than the other two substances. And the least volatile is going to be the one that has the lowest vapor pressure curve here, and that's going to be orthoxylene. Okay, least volatile. So, what is the normal boiling point of each liquid? Note your answer must be within one degree Celsius of the exact answer to be graded correct. So, we have a one degree error margin here. So, how do I find the normal boiling point of each liquid? Well, that is actually very easy to do because here's the connection. The definition of boiling point will help us to be able to find this. And what boiling point is actually defined as is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of a liquid equals the surrounding pressure or the atmospheric pressure. So assuming that we don't have this in a in a uh, something like a pressure cooker, okay, it's just sitting out uh, at atmospheric pressure, then the boiling point will be uh, exactly the temperature that intersects with the vapor pressure of uh, uh, that is equal to atmospheric pressure. Well, what is atmospheric pressure? So sitting out in your room, sitting in, on PRCC campus or sitting out at home, atmospheric pressure is 1 ATM. But there's a problem. The units of this is in ATM. So let's convert that to tors. Well, I know that one ATM is 760 millimeters mercury. And I also know that one millimeter mercury is one tor. So 760 millimeters of mercury is also 760 tor. That is atmospheric pressure. Okay, so a normal boiling point will be the temperature where the vapor pressure curve of that substance is equal to 760 tor. You notice that the boiling points for all of these substances may be different depending on their vapor pressure curve. Okay, so let's look at orthoxylene, the black line. Let's go to 760 tor. So this is 700, 20, 40, 60. Each line has increments of 20 tor. We're going to come across until we hit the black line. So this is 60 right here, 760. We've now intersected the uh, vapor pressure curve for orthoxylene. Now, once we hit the curve, we're going, we're going to come down and see what temperature that corresponds to. So that's here. We're going to come straight down. And that looks like each, each line is one degree Celsius. So this is 41, 42, 43, 144 degrees Celsius. Okay. Let's do acetoacetone. I'm going to go to regular atmospheric pressure, which is 760 tor. Acetoacetone is the green line. 
We're going to come across until I hit the green line. And I need 760 tour. So I'm going to come up. And then I'm going to come down. hundred and thirty seven degrees Celsius acetoacetone boils at hundred and thirty seven degrees Celsius and now let's do the last one pyridine the blue line let's go to atmospheric pressure 760 come across until we hit there it is now let's come straight down 11 12 13 115 degrees Celsius Okay, so under normal atmospheric conditions, I'm in my kitchen, I'm in the lab, these substances will boil at these temperatures in degrees Celsius. And we determine that from their vapor pressure curves. Finish it up, suppose a beaker of acetoacetone is put inside a sealed tank containing acetoacetone gas at 134 degrees Celsius and 400 torr. After 10 minutes, will there be more liquid in the beaker, less liquid, or the same amount? Well, if I look to see where that point is, 134 degrees, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I come up to the 400 tor mark, which is right here, okay? I see that it's below, so this point of intersection, right, again, right there it's below the vapor pressure curve of acetoacetone, which is the green line, right? This point of intersection is below uh, the vapor pressure curve of that green line. So that means that acetoacetone molecules will escape faster than they will be recaptured in the liquid to condense. So the liquid will evaporate faster than it's condensing and the amount of liquid in the, be in the beaker will be reduced, so less than.